onion, you want to use cipollini onions, whatever you want. But these are just an absolute gem because they hold well. You can put them in, in some, um, some mason jars, let them do their thing. They're great to go. So what we went ahead and done is strained the pickling liquid. Absolutely. Okay. So D, do you mind putting that in there? So this is the straining of the, of the pickling liquid, right? Cool. So we're going to do that. And here's the deal, guys. When it comes to marinating steaks, I think it's very important. David knows this well. You don't want to add any salt necessarily to your marinade. Why? Yeah, it takes out all the moisture. Exactly. Ah, you exactly. Know that, huh? You got skills. You're trying to stop me, huh? I'll tell you. It's, it's about to be on. So this is going to be like a little culinary uh, trivia quiz from a man right here, little Jeffrey, right? So the idea is, yeah, you don't want to necessarily put any salt to right before you're about to cook, right? That should be a rule of thumb for everybody at home, okay? So the chimichurri, synonymous uh, accompaniment or salsa that you have in Argentina with the great tradition of parriadas or asados where these huge sort of grilled meats, all different kinds of meats, you have the chimichurri on the side. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip the script and we're gonna put all the components of the chimichurri in the marinade. Coolio. All right, all right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take some fresh cilantro. I'm just gonna cut it kind of roughly and then put that in the marinade, all right, B? You got that? Why don't you grab another knife and help me, bro? Yeah. Where's the love? Where's the love? That's above my pay grade. It's above your pay grade. Your hands, your hands are too valuable. You can't, you can't risk a cut, right? All right, so we're gonna okay, take some. Yeah? Is that way everyone can see, right? Yeah, so we'll take some Italian parsley. I like this as opposed to uh, doing the curly parsley. That stuff like belongs on a pancake at Denny's. You wanna use, you want to use the real good Italian parsley, right? So we got that. We're going to chop some garlic. Beautiful, right? No big deal. Try to always make sure that when you, when you work with your garlic, you can chop it. You can actually put a little bit of salt on top of it to break it down. So we'll do that. We're going to put some olive oil. Throw some olive oil in there, Big D. All right. We'll put a little bit of red pepper flakes in there as well. All right. So we're already off to a fantastic start. I know that all of you guys hopefully got... Uh, my cookbook or my memoir, my newest uh, edition out, and you guys have it. Uh, also, we sent some seasoning your way, the Aron's Adobo. As a barbecue man, well, how do you like your seasonings, David? I mean, we're from Texas, man. Salt and pepper. Salt and pepper, exactly. <laughs> but if you, were, if you were to have your favorite seasoning blend, what would be some of the spices and ingredients? I mean, it'd like? be a little bit of cumin, there'd probably okay. be some paprika, mm -hmm. maybe some salt, some garlic, some onion powder. You know, I like that. Probably everything that's in your season, man. Huh? And you know what? You happen to be right. <laughs> so, what we have, uh, yeah, basically a lot of those components are in here. And uh, the idea, my adobo is kind of your seasoning blend. It's kind of like a metaphor for your, for your vibe. You know, your adobo is who you are, right? Yeah. So this is what we have here. So we're going to put a very... Is it going with those special dance moves? Absolutely. I don't know if that was, that was, it was more like a shimmy as opposed to a dance move. You know what I mean? So let's do this. We got the tongs right there, D. Do me a favor. We'll just start to mix up everything. We're going to put a little bit of olive oil as well as we did. And the idea is that the recipe calls for marinades for about 30 minutes. Oh, here we go. And I'm going to put some black pepper, right? Make sure everything's nice and encased in there and has all the love. And that vinegar from the onions is only going to reinforce that flavor later on when we serve and we plate and you'll see how we're all gonna bring it together, okay? Here you go, dude. So when we do that, we'll put that aside because now we gotta marinate this one. We'll show them a little bit of love, what that looks like. Oh right? yeah. Please. This is like marinated goodness right here. Got everything incorporating. We're gonna set this aside for about 15, 20 minutes. Yep. And we'll revisit it. Yep, absolutely. All right. So now that we have that, let's go ahead and talk about the perfect side dish, right? We're talking about steak and potatoes. You know that I'm a Texas boy. Yeah, from El Paso, the, Texas. El Paso, Texas, the beautiful sun city. Uh, they say that God smiled on El Paso because we're right there across the border. So I just want to throw that out. I know my Fort Worth, my TCU fans here, all my new friends, but El Paso is pretty special. Yeah. We have a great university called UTEP. You've heard of it? I think. Yeah, yeah you think? Okay, great. Anyway, so as we're moving forward, uh, let's talk about potatoes, right? So steak and potatoes, we here in Texas obviously have such a big culture for beef, right? Beef is king. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. So um, right now we're going to work with the perfect side dish will be actually potatoes or papas bravas. 
And in essence, what we're going to do, the word brava means kind of like to spice up or brave, like kind of, uh, you know, getting a little bit angry. So what we've gone ahead and done is that we're roasting some potatoes here in the oven, about 350, good amount of time. I mean, it calls for an hour. If you wanted to, if you were pressed for time, you can actually parboil them or you can cook them a little bit more uh, as you go. But what we're gonna in essence do is let these kind of cook. So all we simply done is uh, season them with olive oil, salt and pepper. That's kind of what we have here rocking and rolling. Let's work on some of the other components. D, let's grab that chile poblano right there, my bro. So the chile poblano. Right, let's see what it looks like fresh, right? We have one here just to give you guys an idea of how you look at it at the store, right? The chile poblano, this is very famous because this is where you get the chiles in nogada or the stuffed peppers that you commonly find. And what we've gone ahead and done is actually roasted them, fire roasted them on the open flame. You can use them on the grill. Um, the idea is that you want to get all of that, that waxy skin kind of broken down a little bit and let those flavors kind of come out. Here's one thing that we don't do. What do we don't do when we roast the chili? Roast it. No, we roasted it. But what do we do afterwards? <laughs> What's yeah. one faux pas that we shouldn't do? No clue. Don't wash it. Right? Well, yeah. We'll some people it. like, yeah, some people like to rinse it after you roasted it. You went through all that process of Didn't actually that could, that could charm and you don't wash it off, yes, right? So the idea being here is you want to kind of just remove the top part of it, right? You guys feeling me on that one? You guys can kind of see what we're looking for. So char it all the way around. Yeah. And then we've gone ahead and put it in a paper bag or plastic bag in this case. And the idea is you want to just kind of take your knife and run it all around and, and remove some of that, that charred skin but you still have the same, you still have that smoky flavor retained in it, right? So we'll move some of the stems. He's gonna continue doing this because he's just not gonna sit there and look pretty. He's gonna have to help me, all right? So we got that. And it's okay if you have some little excess uh, kind of charred bits. I like that personally. I think it's cool, it's aesthetically pleasing. So we'll remove some of those, uh, those charred bits, if you don't mind there, David. And the idea being is that you want to get that, we're going to dice that. And as we're doing that, we're going to start working with some onion and some of the other components to make these potatoes. Okay. Now, look, if you, if you kind of are maybe not a big spicy fan, you can use roasted red bell pepper in this case, instead of the poblano. It's really up to you guys. Use this as a, as a basis or uh, you're actually doing a better job than I did, bro. I don't know, bro. Yeah. And then, yes. Who do you think, who do you think they, who yeah. think, who's who the you, TCU who, guy? Who, who do y'all think taught this guy how to cook? Yeah, man? exactly. <laughs> like I taught you how to tackle, by the way. Anyway. Uh, exactly. Cool. That's why I'm out of the league and I'm on cooking shows now. Really? Dude, <laughs> you had a good run. Stop it. <laughs> really? And then, yeah, so we're going to do that and then we're going to dice it up. We'll remove some of the little charred bits as well. And then that's going to be a big part of our actual Papas Brava. So what I'm going to go ahead and do, we're going to grab another skillet and uh, we're going to start to saute some of these foundation flavors. There you go. Perfect, brother. And you want them in big, nice, chunky pieces. Why is that important, guys? Because you want to make sure that it's all consistent with the meatiness of the potatoes, right? Absolutely. You don't want them too finely diced because it's just going to like defeat the purpose. You want it to stand up to the actual uh, cooking. Do you mind grabbing a skillet, my brother? No, we need another one for the potatoes. So that's our meat, that's our corn. If you don't mind. Thank you. All right, so now we're gonna get some perfect, brother. And let's just get that on a little bit of a little heat. What we're gonna go ahead and do is slice a little bit or dice a little bit of onion, I should say. And here's the deal. Don't be intimidated by slicing onions, okay? Or dicing them. You want to just kind of roll your knife down, okay? See that? And once you get that, you kind of just run your knife crossways, and then you just kind of break it down like that. Boom. Boom. And it, it, it's okay if it's not perfect, guys. You know? We're cooking at home. Some of that rustic nature is all good, right? So we have that, okay? Now we have our onions and our roasted poblanos, and then I'm going to take some garlic, 
Then we've gone ahead and pre-peeled. David got up at five in the morning, went to the to his little farm in the back, harvested some beautiful uh, garlic. Oh, right? Absolutely. Yeah, peeled it while I was sleeping. And so this is just a dedication that a good TCU man has, right? Exactly, man. Totally. We're built around that. Of yeah. course, of course. Never giving up. Never giving up. Never take shortcuts. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> love that. All right, so cool. We have our garlic, we have our roasted poblano. We're going to heat this skillet up. And then we'll start to go for it and get some of these flavors going, okay? So a good amount of good olive oil. You know, I'm partial to a Spanish Chilean olive oil. If you have California olive oil, it's all good, right? Okay, now this is something that a lot of people don't necessarily practice a lot at home. Everyone thinks that you have to heat up your pan super hot to like, you know, cook garlic or onions. It sometimes is beneficial to start with a colder pan and bring it up slowly. That way you don't char, uh, you don't burn the garlic, you don't burn the onions. So you love garlic, right? Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. So David's gonna add all those foundation flavors for the papas bravas, right? So we have the roasted polano, the garlic, the onion, that's gonna do its thing as our potatoes are roasting, okay? I hope all of you guys are having fun. Are, we fo are you guys following along? We have our steak marinating in the beautiful chimichurri marinade. We have our potatoes going. They're, they're roasting slowly in the oven. We got the foundation flavors here for the, uh, the papas bravas. And let's talk about the other side there, shall we? Let's just talk about like how we got the whole frog family watching us right now. You're an honorary frog. Yeah. So this is the first is there ever. A, is there a doll? Is there like a, a dance or like I mean, something we should do? Let me see your hands. Yeah. Just, you just kind of curl these up right there. Mm -hmm. And then you just scream, go frogs. Go frogs! <laughs> 1, Let's go ranas! <laughs> ranas. That's the Spanish word for frogs. Her. Frogs don't make that sound. Ribbit! Ribbit! Love that! Awesome. I'm feeling the vibe already here, man. I mean, being in Fort Worth, completely immersed with a TCU fan, it doesn't get better than this, right? Okay, cool. So, we got that going. We have our skillets getting hot. We have our corn. Let's talk about the corn, guys. So, we're going to do like our little version of Mexican street corn, okay? So we peeled some corn. This also came from David's back, his little farm that he has in the back that he got up early and actually was there harvesting the, the corn while I was sleeping. And uh, so that's what's happened. So you can tell the beautiful nature of it. Pristine hawthorn corn, oh, we'll call it. So we have that. And then what we're gonna go ahead and do is just simply grill it. I don't like putting oil or anything on the corn as it roasts. I want it really kind of clean and simple because the idea is that we're going to just kind of like dress it with a beautiful mayonnaise and some chili and adobo is going to be wonderful. So we're going to let it just kind of do its thing, char up really nicely. We're cooking our poblanos and we're cooking our onions and garlic. I think we're doing really well here. Who says that, who says that men can't multitask, right buddy? Exactly. We're on it, right? So we got things rolling, all right? <clears throat> Maybe we should put down the hot oil. Hotter one on the back. Doesn't the other one crack a little bit? Cool. It does, right? Okay, cool. All right. So here we are. Let's come grab the papas, the papitas. Now you can see how they kind of broken down a little bit and gotten happy. I like that. See? Can you guys see the little the little potato can? The papa can? Oh, we already have a can. We have can. And then we have a papa can. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, man? So we're good. All right, so now that we got that, here's the deal. We're gonna put the potatoes sauteing with those flavors in there. David's gonna do that. All right, you mind just taking some time, use a spoon, use a, a spat, whatever you have available. Okay. <clears throat> and then what we're gonna simply do, Now look, the recipe calls, some of the recipe calls for Chihuahua cheese, you know, copija, whatever you have available as far as the cheese to kind of finish this dish up. So again, I'm using this as sort of a reference, a template for flavor and for delicious dishes. But if you don't happen to have a certain cheese to substitute with something like 
no big deal. I'm very partial to cacique, obviously. Uh, and then I was out looking for the Chihuahua cheese. And, and we couldn't I, find the Chihuahua cheese. I think that's just slightly inhumane, you know? Exactly. <laughs> All right, so we're going to cook down the potatoes. We're going to let them do a stay. We have our corn roasting, okay? Now, as the corn is roasting, I think David's going to go ahead and, and start to throw the steaks on the grill. I think that's important. And we're going to use a cast iron skillet, y'all. Why cast iron skillet? Because it retains heat really well. If you're not, if, if you don't have access to an outside grill, obviously you can do this on the grill. But if you're gonna come inside and, you know, use a cast iron skillet. They're beautiful, right? Look how gorgeous this is. What, what's one thing we don't do with a cast iron skillet? Wash it. No, you never wash it. Why? It's gonna rust and it's gonna be terrible. You have to wipe it out after every use and let that cast iron skillet get seasoned. Yeah, that flavor, has stored, huh? Yeah, like this flavor. But it's, it, it's kind of like my grill. Yeah. It's like my smoker, you know? Exactly. If someone were to come over here and try to wash my smoker, that means I would lose like 10 years of good flavor. Exactly. That would be terrible. That'd be like fighting words. 1,000%. I love that. Okay, so we're gonna get this nice and hot, and you can tell that your skillet's gonna be hot when it starts to smoke a little bit. David's going ahead and working with the papas, you can see right there. His technique is awful, but he's trying to flip it. <laughs> so I'll, sh I'll show you how to do it. I'll make on the papa can. There you go, buddy. Look at that. Not one piece of onion yeah. forfeited there. Chef right. Adon, we've got one question while you're talking about the uh, papas. How many pounds and how much onions? What's the, what's the ratio? Yeah, that's a very good question. So mm -hmm. in this case, we used about, you know, three pounds of potatoes. Um, and then for half an onion, I would imagine. And then we used, yeah, half an onion, two, uh, two poblano peppers that we roasted and, and maybe about five cloves of garlic. So great question. Good deal. Got one other question. Um, one of our viewers wants to know, when you go about cutting the steak, what's the best technique? That's a very good they question. Said, they said they've got a big beef loin and that's their specific uh, cut. <clears throat> well, the, the best way to cut a steak or any kind of beef is against the grain. Mm -hmm. that'll, that'll maximize the tender, tenderness of the steak and obviously give you the best slice. So against means across, as you look at the, as yeah. as you look at yeah. the piece of meat, yeah. you, see the, you see the grain or the lines. Yeah, and you go against it, you basically, go, yeah. yeah. You can see that the flank steak has them running like this down. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go the other way. Okay. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna go the other way. Yeah, okay? Great questions. Yeah. And then here's the other good part about this. I think we were good to go. Let's throw them up. Let's throw the steaks on the grill. There you go. So, what's very important when you're, when you're going to go ahead and cook the steak, we're going to do that right now, but is to make sure that you rest your meat, right? So, once it's cooked, whether you a ribeye, a sirloin, perfect, a sirloin, uh, ribeye, t bone, whatever it is, try to rest it for the same amount of time that you cook it, right? That's a really good uh, rule of thumb. If you're worried about it cooling down, put a little foil on it. You know what I mean? Just to let it rest, because all those juices are going to come where? Back inside. Yeah. And here's the other part of this, guys. Don't feel the need with the steak, and David knows this well better than anybody. We'll take some of that. Um, don't feel the need to rush the flipping process. Let that pan retain all the heat and you're gonna create a beautiful sear and a beautiful uh, crust on the outside, and that's what you want, okay? So, don't rush this process by any means, okay? So, we're letting the potatoes get some color, kind of do their thing and crisp up. We got our steaks cooking. We're not gonna mess with it too much. We're actually charring the corn. It'll be, it'll be done by Tuesday. So, uh, and then we'll be fine there. And then, but while we're doing that, let's go ahead and make the little dressing for the actual uh, corn, okay? So, we have some mayonnaise. Watch this, check this out. We got a little bit of mayo, okay? We have some beautiful chipotles and adobo, right? So in essence, this is a canned chipotle, right, that you can find in the supermarket. I love this product. 
but it's, it's non-perishable, you're good to go. We've actually just taken the liquid or the adobo that comes in the chipotle, right? So we're gonna add this. So what is a chipotle when it's fresh? It's a jalapeno pepper. Jalapeno pepper, my man. My man. It's no wonder man. you went to TCU, exactly. buddy. That great education, education you had. Huh? I love that. <laughs> so the jalapeno pepper comes from the beautiful state of Veracruz, Mexico, on the Gulf Coast. Uh, the, the actual capital of Veracruz is Jalapa, spelled with an X. Jalapa, jalapeno. Yeah. There's something else that is sweet and that is very delicious and spicy that comes from Veracruz. And that's Salma Hayek. Yeah. Now, Salma Hayek is spicy and delicious that comes from Veracruz. Come on, chef. I feel like you're not paying attention, buddy. Come on. Let's go. We're doing good, buddy. All right, so do me a favor. Let's mix this up. Put a little bit of salt and pepper in there. I'm going to hit it with some lime juice. Well, the recipe doesn't really call for it, but I'm going to get a little freaky with it. And this is what you call a rookie right here. Look, he brought his little mitt out. Oh, yeah. See? See, chefs don't do that, okay? They don't whip their little mitt now like he's making cookies or Baking a pot, okay? <laughs> real cooks don't use this, okay? Yeah. Cool. Anyway. And real cooks don't have fingertips for them either, huh? Yeah, we don't have any. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Here we go. A little bit of lime juice. Orale. Orale. All right, we got another question, Chef Anora. Yeah. What was your favorite meal that your mom cooked you growing up? Ah, fantastic question. So my mom, when I come home, and I'm like old school in the sense that I really don't eat Mexican food out a lot unless my family cooks it. So when my mom, I would ask her to make me some enchiladas, beautiful braised chicken enchiladas. And then we'd like to have it with a nice ice cold Coca-Cola on Saturdays. And that's just, that's like love right there. And that's the real Coke with, with the sugar. You want the sugar yeah. to make the Coke. Yeah, there you go. You take I'm going to let David cook the steak. Oh, there you go. There you go. So we're looking really good. All right. So just to revisit what we've got going on, guys. So I have the mayonnaise, the chipotle in the dough bowl, just like the, the, the actual sauce some lime juice, a little bit of salt and pepper. And this is going to be, in essence, uh, what we're going to cover the corn with once it's roasted. Okay? Just so you all know. Okay? So we got that going. Now... We've got another question about the adobo. If you make that in advance, does that need to stay in the fridge or can you just leave it out? Uh, the, uh, this, this mixture? Right. Yeah, you should put it in the fridge. Absolutely. If it has mayonnaise in it, for sure. All right, so the potatoes are good to go, guys. All right, let's look at them. You see how they're roasted and they have all that beautiful char. That is delicious. Doesn't it smell fantastic in here? Hey, can you pop it again without wasting it? Okay. Yeah. You all see, right, you all see, right. not one cube of onion is forfeited with this unbelievable technique. Okay? <laughs> David forgets that there's only two master chefs in this country. It's me and Gordon Ramsay. Just throwing that out. All okay? Right, all right. Is that, that's the definition of tooting your own hand. Yes. All yeah, right. yeah. All right. Okay. So we're, we're, we're continuing to tooting and we're rooting. We're rooting and tooting. All right. So, chef, put a little bit of cotija cheese on top of the papas. And that's going to be ready to go. And then ready to go? Yeah. yeah. Oh. With a nice generous amount. And more. Oh. Are you counting it or what? Well, we're we got more of this, bro. We're very calculated. And, and, uh, oh, well, Put the rest of it in there. <laughs> Jesus. I mean, you can't read behind the lines, bro. Come oh. on. No mummies. All right. There we go. All right. Here we go. That's what we're looking. Papas have been cheese. All right. So that's good. David's cooking the steak beautifully, which I'm completely surprised by. And then we're gonna go ahead and cut a little bit of, of the sickety cilantro and throw that into our papas. Okay. I hope everyone's having fun out there. Are you guys having are you guys enjoying yourselves? Thumbs up? Everyone's having fun? Thank you. They didn't say anything, but <laughs> all right, cilantro done. Potatoes, awesomeness. Steak, 
moment. Okay? Now, David, come on, buddy. We're not done working. All right? No plays off, okay? Oh. No days off? No, no plays off. Oh, uh, quit. No, come on. All right, we're doing good. See, the core charm, the stage core, too. We're looking actually really good. I mean, you think we're going to be able to pull this off? I'm a little worried about you. Are you? I know I had it under control. <laughs> I guess we got, we got one more question. How how long to marinate the steak? 30 minutes minimum. I would go maximum two, three hours. But remember, there's vinegar in that marinade. So you don't want to necessarily make ceviche and steak. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so if it, has, if it has too much of that marinade in there, it, it might render the steak rubber. Right? Cool. So the papas are good. We'll get to the papa can. The papa can. Well, can, can is doing the papa can as well. But well, I'm like being papa with the papa can. Right? Alright. So we've got one piece of a little thinner. So that's going to come out obviously earlier. We can flip them a little bit. That's when we're searing it. We're looking good. Feeling good. All right, well, I think what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna put these steaks right when we start to cook, right, right when we're done cooking them, we're gonna lay them down on this little board and we're gonna let them rest, okay? And then once we do that, then we can kind of go to the finish line. And we like using these beautiful platters, right, David? You know, use a big wooden cutting board and serve right off of that. No need to like necessarily put them on a platter per se. You got the cutting board as a vehicle. And we're there. Um, all right, team, here's, here's another one for you. We got a bunch of questions. And we're right, going yeah. to get deeper into some here in a minute, but here's one. And these guys are just, they're fielding them as I throw them at them. They, yep. they have no idea what's coming. Uh, one of our viewers says, I don't like mayo. What's a good substitute for the adobo if I don't like mayo? You can use uh, crema mexicana, which is, in essence, a lighter style of sour cream instead of mayo. That would be my suggestion. So put all the same components, but with crema. You're looking good, buddy. Yeah, I mean, I think you're about to turn this thing into like popcorn, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right, D, what do you think? We should take the skinny one out, no? Let's let that rest. You want a little medium rare? Are you really? <laughs> no, mama's. Yeah. Look at, look at that. I take the guessing out of cooking. All right. <laughs> Why don't you just put that right here oh, with the yeah, other one? Yeah, yeah. Can I get this? <laughs> the mitten and the thermometer should Whoa. be hand in hand for David's cooking. You okay? Know what? See. I think this is perfect. Medium rare. Really? We're at 138. Why did you know that? Okay, yeah. I just use the thermometer. Oh, oh. Anyway, yeah. you know? this will move that little sucker. Put it right here on the board. You cheater. <laughs> cheater. Hey, right. if you're not cheating, you're not trying, all right? Exactly. Come on, D. Where's the love, buddy? And then so we have a couple of thicker pieces, so they're going to have to take their time. But this is a beautiful-looking steak right there. Flank, beautiful, economical. If you don't have flank, skirt steak would be another great option. Or you can use that marinade for, frankly, anything that has fur. And maybe hooves, right? Uh, How we looking, bud? Yeah, well, seven. Come, Come on, look you working, bud. I mean, Come on, man. I know this guy is so used bugs. to cooking in these like commercial grade kitchens. And this is my house. Yeah. And I'm gonna need this guy to clean up after all this. Uh, yeah. After all this fast shifting, I guess. Yeah. See. That's right. And while while we're at it, you mentioned we're in your house in your kitchen. We need to give a big shout out to your wife, Katie, who yep. let. All this circus come into this house. Is Absolutely. I showed up. I showed up about three this afternoon, <laughs> and she's like, "Oh, I didn't know you were coming." I'm like, "Nice communication, Dave." <laughs> Keep the drive alive, baby. I'll sit in the backyard. It's okay. Exactly. I love it. All right. So we're yeah, doing. Yeah, yeah. You know, well, let's do this, buddy. Let's get a plate for the corn, and then maybe a plate for the uh, for the papas. All right, we got another question. Got the corn in here. All right. Yep. The question of the moment is white or yellow corn tortillas? Oh, man. White. 
That's a tough one. Well, the traditional one to use is white corn tortillas in Mexico because they have a different strain of corn down there. Uh, but if you want to have the argument about flour versus corn, now I was brought up in the way that I'm from El Paso, my family cattle ranchers in Sonora and Chihuahua. If you have beef or anything that's meat related, you should serve on a flour tortilla. Everything else, fish, vegetables, uh, pork, you should be served on a corn tortilla. I mean, that's just my kind of little thing, you know, but obviously you can serve them on, on corn tortilla. Anything is great, but just if you're ever in doubt, Cool. All right, so David's pulled out the steaks. We got one here resting. We're going to serve on the board. We have the corn. Let's finish up the corn. We probably need one more plate for the potatoes, too. Bro. That way we can show everybody how we look. Perfection steaks have been on the board, Yeah, no, but we'll serve the steak here, no? What you think? Yeah, that's a stage one. Yeah. But whatever you want. I mean, we're at your house. All right, cool. So we got a nice, we got a nice little, uh, a nice little char on the corn. Okay. Now again, here's another option. I know you guys have the recipe at home. You can take the corn off the cob after it's roasted, so you basically have to shave it, and you can toss all the ingredients in there as well. That's one option, or you can serve it on the cob. So let's cob it out. All right. So we're gonna get some of the corn right here. No, no, we'll put it right on the plate. Oh, right on the plate. Okay. Get a nice charred one. There you go. That's a good one. There you go. All right. All right. Let's make sure that we get it right here. Look, I'll show you. Yeah, you do it. You do it. You do it. All right. Come on. Okay. Can y'all see that? Maybe you can take your little mitten away. Mitten. <laughs> you put the mitten right. No, no, you did the mitten. All right. All right. So now we have the corn right there. Okay. I'm watching y'all. And then. The idea is just to do a little slather jammy jam on that, okay? Get that beautiful chipotle mayo all around the corn. Kind of just do that. Make sure that it's kind of encasing it and glazing the whole corn cob, okay? Now what you can do to this is put beautiful cotija cheese, which I call the seasoning cheese, because it has a nice little sharpness and, and salt content to it. We'll do that and we gotta probably get another plate, Chef, so we can plate it nice. You know what I'm saying? So we got that. You can put a little bit of Aron's adobo. Right? Beautiful seasoning right on top as well. Look how good that looks, my brother. Are you kidding me? All right. And then we're gonna do a little bit of cilantro as well. And we'll just chop that up as well and then we'll serve it. And that's in essence what you're looking for. Okay, now, if you didn't want, again, to, to eat off the cob, you can shave it off and serve it just like a big bowl of this beautiful heaping corn love. So that's what you're looking for, guys, okay? And then we'll just place it, making sure you're picking up all that cheese on the plate, making sure that none of that is forfeited. And that is your Mexican street corn. Done, PCU. Dave Hawthorne and Sanchez style, baby. All right. We got that. We'll repeat the process with these little bad boys. David's going to continue to do that because I don't want sit, to sit and stand in there like a tree not doing anything. So, all right. There you go, bud. All right. So now that we got that, I'm going to start to slice the first bisteki. The bisteki. All right. So remember, like we spoke earlier, you guys can see all the different. Uh, lines and intramuscular fat that's going down. So we're gonna cut the opposite way, right? So what I'll do is I'm gonna slice it in half and then I'm gonna go against the grain, okay? Okay? You know, David bought these knives at a garage sale so they're not very sharp, but other than that, I think we're good, okay? But it's okay, it's okay. Yeah, but we'll be fine. We're going to power through this, guys, okay? Look at this. Look at that. Look at that beautiful medium mirror. You know how we know that? Because David used a thermometer, okay? <laughs> no, no, it's going to be all right, buddy. It's going to be all right. Trust me, trust me. It's going to be okay. Don't worry about it. 
Okay, cool, cool, cool. Thanks. And then what is David Pass on Yeah. All right, here we go. So now we got the same thing. Look how beautiful this. Ooh, baby. Now we're cooking with the old guy, Sabina. Look at that. So Dave and I apologize for the amount of flavor. It's like a flavor disclaimer. There's too much flavor going on like right now. Yeah, like right now. It's a flavor okay. disclaimer, bro. So then we got that. Look how beautiful that video is. Can we eat right now? Hold on, hold okay. on. Don't get too much excited, okay? All right, let's plate the papas though, bro. Let's do it, let's do it. Finish. Dude, you're no. supposed to finish the yeah, corn, yeah. man. I'm no, all right, come on. Yeah, Sorry, come on. Now, man, <laughs> what's up? Look at this right here, bro. Perfection on top of perfection. And then we'll do some slices of beautiful the old flanky flankers. My man, stop playing, chef. Out of all of my pupils that I've had, you are kind of in the mid. But, you, but, but you, you know, you're like somebody I can work with. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I so got the, potential? Yeah. I got potential as a chef here? Yes, indeed. Indeed. Yeah. Indeed. So this is awesome. awesome. All right. So that's what we're looking for. Should we go to shoot cam or should we go to this thing? Well, let's go. Let's do both. Oh. It's that delicious. Come on, bro. Watch out. We're going to go food cam first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're going to come back to this cam. Unreal. Guys, let's get into some questions. What do you say? Yeah, we're all done. Uh, we're done here, with the cooking. Here we're we good. go. They want to go, uh, they want to know, Chef at home, what's your favorite guilty pleasure meal? That's a great one. Texas, uh, Texas Christian University. Yes. No. Yes, <laughs> Texas Christian University. Yeah. No, it's, um, you know what? Thank you for that, Chef. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, no, for me, it has to be barbecue. Absolutely. And not just any barbecue, but David Hawthorne barbecue. It's not just you. <laughs> and I must say, I'm not even joking with you, but I love Texas brisket with the deco. I like a nice fatty brisket. That's my jam. All right. The potatoes tonight, uh, are they russet potatoes, red, yeah, gold? What are they? Yeah, that's a good question. Russets is what we use today, but, I mean, you can use Yukon golds. Oh, shit, that's that. Oh, Chef, come on, man. I got an insurance over here. Bro. Come on, buddy. Look at that. And I'm this the one wearing flip-flops. I mean, right. he's wearing flip-flops with a knife. I know. So then, yeah, russets or Yukon Golds would be the move. All right, guys. What, uh, they want to know what the uh, level is on the heat to keep the corn from charring. <clears throat> we did a, uh, today we did a medium-high heat. Yep. Yep. And we have, a, we have a cast iron skillet with a grill grate on it. So if you look at the cast iron, you'll see... You'll see that our cast iron has grill grates along the inside of it. Okay. All right, here's one for David. Mm -hmm. They want to know what's your favorite dish at Not Just Q? Mm -hmm. Ooh, my favorite dish at Not Just Q. I would have to say the, uh, the tacos. I'm a tacos guy. So the pulled pork tacos and the brisket tacos. That's our number one seller. All right, here's a fun one for uh, Chef Adon. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite tequila? My favorite tequila? I'm happy someone asked me that, by the way. <laughs> it's called Tequila Cazadores. It's uh, fantastic tequila from Los Altos. Uh, Los Altos is in Jalisco, uh, outside, about an hour outside of uh, uh, Guadalajara. It has the big buck on the one. It has the right? big buck on the one, yeah. yeah. But be on the lookout. There might be some other tequila coming your way. That might be interesting. All right. Uh, we got another question here from Cleggy in Fort Worth. It says, if you could only hear one song the rest of your life, what would it be? Yeah. Each of you. Each of you. You go first. We're like 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 two little schoolboys. You yeah. go first. You go first. No, no, no. You first. No. You first. No. no, no, no. I think I would. Uh, I think I would do Creed. One last breath. <laughs> <laughs> you know what song I would hear? What? Me consider rogarle. Me consider decirle. Que yo sin ella 
¡Qué pena muero! Yo sentí que mi vida... That's my Drake, right? Yeah, my Drake, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> All, right. All right, here's one for Chef and Owen. They yeah. They're taking some shots at you now. They said, Chef, how low do you have the... Oh, no, wait. Hang on. Here it is. Oh, here it is. How low can you go? Yeah. Oh, here it is. Number one. What's it like working on the Food Network? Well, it's a lot of fun, obviously. You know, the, uh, the Food Network really opened a lot of doors, not just for me, but many, many cooks out there. The fact that we can share our passion for food with everyone in America is pretty special. So, but right. now you got to watch MasterChef, okay? On Fox, it comes out on Wednesdays, okay? All right, here's, your local listing. here's one from Travis. Blame this, blame this one on you. It's for Chef at all. Is your spice tolerance better than you showed on Heat Seekers? Oh, <laughs> I want to be shocked. Uh, yeah, I want to also remind you that's almost 10 years ago and 40 pounds ago. So as you get older, your, uh, your tolerance for spice gets a little lower. You know what I'm saying? When I was younger, yeah, I could eat a lot of spicy food. I still love spicy food, obviously, but yeah, it's kind of mellowed out a little bit. All right, here's one from David, or for David. Mm -hmm. David, where did your passion for cooking come from? Uh, I think it came from my hometown, my grandma. My grandma is a very, very good cook. I think she is the best cook in my life. Yep, she and is. she should probably be a master chef if the show was invented back then. Yep. And then there would be three master chefs. Absolutely. And you know why? And I think everyone can relate to this at home. I think we can all agree grandma's food is the best, right? Yeah. You know why? Because grandmothers are never in a rush. You ever see your grandmother move fast? No. No. <laughs> so they had those, those beans or whatever you're cooking had, you know, grandmas take the time to let all those flavors marry and cook for a long period of time. We're always in a rush. And I really, one thing I want to say about grandmas and grandpas, always make that Saturday afternoon visit with them because they're not going to be around and you're going to feel bad. So make the time to visit with your grandma. So that being said, mm. is, it, is low heat the magic? Yeah, low that? heat, low and slow. Let, you know, let the process happen naturally. All right. All right, here's a question. This is a good one. This is from Brian. He says, what kind of drinks do you recommend with this meal you just prepared? Red. red I, mean, I would say red wine. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I would say red wine. This is, a, this is a perfect red wine meal right here. Yeah. And I would suggest, too, if you wanted, uh, definitely like a Malbec from Argentina. They're delicious as well, you know, because that's a state culture, and they eat beef all the time. So look for an Argentinian Malbec. Terrasas de los Andes is one of my favorites. All right, here's a question. They're putting you on the spot. Chef at home, since you're from El Paso, mm -hmm. where's your favorite taco place in El Paso? Oh, man. Or is there just one? Yeah, that's a good one. Um, well, maybe that taqueria you never took me to when I went down there to visit. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's it? Yeah. That's uh, it's, well, look, if you want like a, a quick drunk bite at the end of the night, everyone goes to Chico's Tacos, right? Which are these little roll kind of flautas, crispy tacos. That's what is an El Paso tradition. Uh, as far as another one I really like, I like going to Kiki's, uh, who does, she does machaca. It's kind of like this reconstituted beef hash that's just delicious. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Or here's, other here's one for each of you. What's your favorite dish you learned from your family? David, Dave, you want to go? My favorite dish I learned from my family. I would say probably uh, the Christmas and Thanksgiving dressing. I think that's uh, what it if I had an opportunity to cook dressing and like outside of like the holidays, I probably would do it. But everybody would hate me. And was that is that stuffy the southern yeah, cornbread, like cornbread dressing? dressing mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Savory little gravy, little cranberry. I think that's uh, that reminds me of home every time. Yeah, and I, I don't think we should take for granted that people might not say you know in the South you call a stuffing like what you do for turkey dressing. Right, just not to confuse everybody, okay? Oh, you thought I was talking about ranch dressing? Yeah, probably. Oh, all right. Yeah. All right. Mean. Chef Alon, how, how about you? Family dish. Family dish for me? Oh, man, it have to be... My mom used to make this sopa seca, which is like a dried pasta. It's basically kind of like fideos or a little alphabet pasta cooked in a roasted tomato, uh, kind of cilantro broth with tons of cotija cheese. That's like my comfort food. All right, here's a hardware question. They want to know what's the best way to keep your knives sharp. Do you take them to somebody to yeah. get them done or do you try to do it yeah. yourself? Yeah, I think it's important to mention, you know, the steel, which is the long 
kind of bit that you do that, that doesn't sharpen your knife. All it simply does is bring the, the edge back on it. So when you sharpen your knives, you have to use a stone, right? So my suggestion is, I mean, if, if, you, if you really want to take the time and learn Japanese stones, the ones we use at the restaurant, but take it to somebody that's credible. Sharpen your Central knives. Central Market does it, huh? Yeah. Yeah, you can drop them off. Yeah. You can drop them off at Central Market, they'll sharpen them for you in a couple of days and get them back to you. I can't tell with this one, but yeah. The, All right, here, here's, here's one that's gonna, I, I, I feel a wrestling match for the microphone coming. So um, we're just gonna lay this one out here and let you all have at it. Somebody wants to know, how did y'all meet and how'd you become friends? Sounds like well, a long story. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I, was, uh, I was playing for the Saints and he's a diehard Saints fan. Since 1990, when we went eight and oh, we had the Dome Patrol. We had the Cajun Cannon, Bobby Hebert throwing the rock. Yeah. And so I'd go into his restaurant, you know, after the games, and we would go there every yeah. after every game. And then one day he uh, he cooked me a whole hog and tried to get me to eat the eyeball. Yep, I remember that. And that was... then after that day, I think we became friends because yeah. And I didn't have any idea that he was he was he's such a fan of food, you know. And like my perception and my ignorance was like athletes don't want to eat anything that's not healthy because that's part of their job is staying in shape, right? When all the crew from the Saints came in. David came and started sharing his love for food, and especially barbecue, being a Texas guy. You know, that's, that's where the friendship started, man. And yeah, it, that, that's what it's all about. You can tell we have a lot of, you know, he's been to my house in LA, been, you know, Laurel, and so we, we stay in touch. And I'm in his home, I'm staying here. This is what's beautiful about it. Jeff Renault, tell us about the impact that New Orleans and uh, all, the, all the culinary mix that's mm -hmm. there. I mean, it's a cultural mix, but yeah. how that impacted your career and absolutely. what all you learned there. I mean, it's a tremendous yeah. source of, of knowledge. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, in, in my memoir, where I came from, where I come from, um, you can read a lot about my story and how I got exposed to New Orleans early on. Chef Paul Perdome was our mentor. We were talking about that earlier, but he was my mentor. You know, I had a lot of trials and tribulations early on in my youth, and I needed to have some structure and discipline and going to a kitchen is probably the best thing you can do for that. So New Orleans has always been in my mind and in my heart. And then that's why I choose to call it home now after being brought up in New York City. Uh, I, I, New York City is a melting pot of different cultures and flavors and New Orleans best represents that for me now. And it's always has. So that's why New Orleans is home. All right, here's a question from Shannon. She wants to, uh, she wants to know her husband's a vegetarian and would love to make this meal for him. Mm -hmm. What's a, what's a good meat alternative that you would suggest for this, this type of meat? Yeah, I mean, you can take a, 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 a tofu steak, preferably be a, a smoked tofu steak, and then, uh, and then uh, marinate in the same way, or you can do a cauliflower steak. Take a nice big uh, head of cauliflower and cut it lengthwise, and then marinate in the same way, and grill that, and it's delicious. Yeah. Uh, great suggestion. All right, here's uh, one for both of you that says, if you've got access to sear, do you sear a steak first or at the end of the steak or into the cook? What, what yeah, do you mean? Yeah, there's two different question. ways to do it. It's right? a reverse sear. Yeah. You're talking about. yeah, I mean, I think, there's, I, think there are, I think both ways are great. Mm -hmm. You know, I've done, I've done things where I, where I sous vide, which is basically controlled water cook mm -hmm. and then seared it at the end. Mm -hmm. And then I've also just done a straight sear on the cast iron pan like we did today let it rest, let it come back up to temperature, and it was, it was great both ways. Yeah. What do you think? I agree. Yeah, it depends on the kind of cut, obviously. Um, yeah, you can go about it two different ways, just like David said. You know, you can sous vide it. You can, uh, you can actually kind of cook it a little bit ahead of time, low, and then turn to the heat and then sear it at the end. So they're both good. All right. Well, this fantastic recipe. Great job y'all done tonight. Got one question. What's, what's a really quick, like, 20 minute something yeah. meal recipe that you could do in a pan or, yeah, or a pan. stove top. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm, I have a, my, I'm a big fan of like doing scampi or like quick, you know what I mean? So one pot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can do shrimp, very simply garlic, some of that chipotle and adobo, right? That little can product, lime juice, butter. Now, yeah. love you, bye. Take a little bit of the, uh, I don't want to adobo or not just Q seasoning blend. 
and then some salt, of your pepper, salt and pepper, <laughs> and then and then some of uh, your merchandise, right? Because if you were not just Q clothing, it actually makes your food taste better. Really? Yes, we've talked about I that. I know we have awesome food. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So buy the hats. Yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah, shrimp, shrimp is a quick sear. Yeah, quick sear, but you can also do it with chicken. Basically, a, uh, a lemon butter sauce with chipotle, in essence. Right, here's one more question before we wrap it up. Uh, they want to know, how long will the chipotle peppers and adobo keep? Keep. Well, they're a camp product, so what I would suggest, and by the way, it goes for everything. I don't know about, I mean, just a couple of, uh, you know, housekeeping things when it comes to food. Like, when I open a can of hot sauce, or a bottle of hot sauce, I put it in the fridge after it's open. That's just me. You have a canned product, right? Put it into a, a mason jar or a glass or, or a plastic container and then put it in your fridge and label it so yeah once it's a canned smoke product it'll last a month all right, all right i'm gonna I, I lied we got one more mm -hmm. you can have some fun with this chef uh serena wants to know how would david do on chopped oh, that'll be amazing. our last question yeah <laughs> look here's the deal on chopped we've done a lot of different we've done musicians i, I want to believe we've had some athletes I know that DeMarco Murray was a big fan of the show. Remember, I was got, remember I got an audition for MasterChef. Yes. And then I couldn't go because there's a conflict in interest. Yes, exactly. Yeah. We I, talked I, about yeah, that. Yeah, I just, I mean, I hate that I know you, but yeah, I think it was worth it. You know, on MasterChef, we're going to have to have a whole edition of just athletes. I know we did, we did a finale with uh, Evander Holyfield and Oscar de la Hoya. They did really well. As far as something like Master Chef or Chop, I think David, hands down, not just because he's my compadre, my boy, he would slay it. Absolutely. Would he would chop? kill it. Would you chop? I couldn't chop you personally because that means that our friendship would be at risk. Excellent. excellent. <laughs> All right. Great job. Thank you tonight. so much. Chef Thank you. Sanchez, David Hawthorne. What a great job tonight. I want to thank some folks, uh, the TCU alumni, relations staff, Brooke Schumann, Kerry Brown, Rob Berline, who was on the technical end. From the uh, TC Letterman's Association, President Fred Barber, and our Assistant Director, Cam Fenton, who was at the controls tonight as well. Make sure to stay in touch as a TCU alum at alumni.tcu.edu. We've also got Horn Frogs Connect. Get on there. It's like LinkedIn for TCU, but it's much better. Hornfrogsconnect.com. Thanks to our buddy, Aron Sanchez. Make sure to check him out at chefaronsanchez.com. David Hawthorne, not just Q. You can get him on Twitter at Not Just Q. And we will see you next time. We're going to do this again. This was a great, great, fun event. We'll do it again. The Frogs in the Kitchen, I'm John Denton saying so long and go Frogs. Go Frogs. <laughs>